Hey guys, chapter 10, hypothesis test regarding a parameter. This time we're going over 10.3, hypothesis test for a population mean. So with the population mean, so um, to test hypothesis regarding a population mean, use the following steps provided that. When the sampling, uh, the sample is obtained using a simple random sampling um, or from a ram randomized experiment. Next, the sample has no outliers and the population from which the sample is drawn is normally distributed or the sample size n is larger than 30. The sample values are independent of each other. That is, the sample size is less than 5% of the population size. With these, just like we had for the other, for population proportion, we have the population mean. We either have a two-tailed test where our null hypothesis is equal to, our alternative is not equal to a left tail test when our mean is less than some value and a right tail test when the mean is greater than some value. For all of these, notice that our null hypothesis is mean, the mean is equal to, so there's always that equality in the null hypothesis. Step two, select a level of significance, so alpha. Uh, level of significance alpha depending on the seriousness of making a type one error. Three, compute this test statistic, follow the student's T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom. So remember when we were doing our confidence intervals, we were using the T distribution for the mean, the normal distribution for proportion and chi-square distribution for uh, variance and standard deviation. So it's gonna, we're gonna be using the same sort of things here. So step three, compute the test statistic following the student's T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom. And instead of using the table, we're using Excel. Next, compare the critical values with the test statistics. So if um, T naught is less than um, negative T sub alpha. So this is using the classical approach. So basically what we're saying here is if this is our distribution, if it falls within our critical regions, depending on where, where the crit critical regions are, if it falls within those critical regions, then we reject. If it does not fall within those critical regions, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. So that's just what this is, just in words. If you're able to, if you understand it a little bit better looking at it this way, go ahead and use this. But if not, just use a picture. Step five, state the conclusion. So this is with the classical approach, but we also have the p-value approach. So the p-value approach, we're testing the probability that it falls within the critical region. And if our test statistic, um, still using a test statistic, if our p-value is less than our critical value or less than, I'm sorry, our, sig our significance level, then we would reject. If it's not greater than, or if it's greater than, then we would not reject. So just two different ways that we could calculate those. And again, technology using the p-value approach. We'll take a look at each of those right now. So notice that the procedure um, just presented requires either the population from which the sample was drawn to be normal or the sample size to be large. So sample size being greater than or equal to 30, that would be considered a large sample. The procedure is robust, so minor departures from the normality will not adversely affect the results of the test. However, if the data includes outliers, the procedure should not be used. All right, looking at this, the mean height of American males is 176.3 centimeters. The heights of 44 male US presidents, Washington through Trump, um, have a mean of 180.1 centimeters and a standard deviation of 7.1 centimeters. Treat the 44 presidents as a simple random sample. Determine if their evidence suggests that U.S. presidents are taller than the typical American male. Use alpha equaling 0 0.05 level of significance. All right, so let's grab the necessary information. So the mean height of Americans, so mean, the population mean of American males is 176.3. 
the height of 44 US presidents. So that is not that's X bar. Washington through Trump have a mean of 180.1 centimeters and a standard deviation. So they're talking about the sample still. Standard deviation of 7.1. Treating the 44 presidents as a simple random sample, determine if there is evidence to suggest that the US presidents are taller than the typical male, American male. And we're using alpha equaling 0 0.05. All right, so taking this over to Excel, let's go ahead and get this started, Sue. We're saying the mean there we go. So the mean height 176.3 X bar. So the sample mean is 180.1 S 7.1. We're saying alpha. Zero point zero five. All right, so with all of this data, actually, let's get our hypothesis testing. So with our hypothesis test, we have the null hypothesis. And in this case, the null, uh, let's go back to this. All right, so hypothesis test, where is it? So treating the 44 US presidents as a simple random symbol, determine if there is evidence to a simple, uh, to suggest that US presidents are taller than the typical American. So with our null hypothesis, so null hypothesis, the mean is equal to 176.3, or the alternative is that the mean is um, that they're taller. So that their mean is, or sorry, that the mean height of US presidents is equal to 176.3, or that the mean of US presidents is greater than 180.1. Uh, not 180.1, 176.3, that the US adult or US presidents are on average taller. So US presidents are the same height as US uh, males or that the US presidents are taller than US males. All right, so going back here, null hypothesis is that the mean So mean is equal to 176.3 or H A that the mean is greater than 176.3. All right, so now that we have that, let's clear this out. All right, so we have all of this. We're gonna do our classical approach and our p-value approach. So with our classical approach, what we start off with is our test statistic. And the test statistic, because this is a T distribution, what we're looking for is again, X bar minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation in this case is going to be, uh, let's go down one. So here our standard deviation. So standard deviation is equal to the standard sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. 
So this is equal to our standard deviation divided by SQRT of N, N was 44 precedents. There we go. So 44 precedents, we have all of this, perfect. So now our test statistic T, So T is equal to the numerator of X bar minus the mean divided by our standard deviation. This is our test statistic. And now we're gonna talk about our critical value. So now the critical value T, it's still T. So here, what we're looking at, this is a right tail test because of our mean. I'm sorry, because of our null hypothesis, we have a right tail test here, which means that um, our critical area is going to be to the right. And we know that our critical area alpha is at the 0 0.05 significance. So 0 0.05 level of significance. From here, what we're going to look for is the value right here, the T value to see what whether our test statistic is in the critical region or if it's not in the critical region or the rejection region. So here to find this, we could use the mean, I'm sorry, the T distribution. But Excel always looks at the area to the left. So what we're going to do is hit enter T distribution or T inverse, do we need an area or do we have an area? In this case, we have this area here and we're gonna plug it in here. So the probability here is gonna be 0 0.95, which is the complement of this right here because the entire area under the curve is equal to one. If we have 0 0.05 here, the rest of it is zero, gonna be 0 0.95. Degrees of freedom, remember we had 44 presidents, so degrees of freedom is 43. And there we go. So here, this critical value is equal to 1.68. And our test statistic is way in the critical region. So the critical region um, starting at 1.68, um, test statistic was 3.55, which is definitely in the critical region. So from here, we would say since our test statistic is in the critical region, we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. So we would say with, actually these two should go over here. All right, so we have that. And lastly, we would say with a 5% level of significance, we reject the null. and accept the alternative. That on average, or that American male presidents are typically taller than American 
males. And there we go. So that's our classical approach. So remember classical, we find our critical value, our critical region. If we're inside the critical region, so if we're here, then we reject. If we're anywhere out here, then we do not reject. So we would have to do further testing. And that's it for classical approach. Let's work on the p-value approach. So with the p-value approach, what we're looking at is the probability of the mean being greater than or equal to 0.76.3. So we're looking at this probability, but um, we, we can't look at those probabilities just yet because we're looking for this part of the graph. Um, what we have to find is a probability that we're less than, and then we're gonna find the complement. So here we could say that this is equal to one minus the probability of X bar being less than 176. 176.3, and that's what we would have here. So let me just fix this so it reads. We get the equals in there too. Much better. Okay, and that's what we'll have right here. But first we're gonna have to find P of X bar being less than 176.3. And we'll go on from there. Okay, so here what we're looking at is the probability of X being less than 176.3. So here what we're gonna do is find the area of this yellow region, and we're gonna find its complement right up here. All right, so finding this yellow region, this is a T distribution, so we'll have T. So T distribution or T inverse, are we looking for an area or do we have an area? This time we're looking for an area, so we're gonna click this one. X in this case is our um, X bar. Our degrees of freedom. Actually, we're gonna to have to find our T, our test statistic first. So test statistic, we already found it here, so we would have this one here degrees of freedom, it's 43 because we had 44, cumulative true, and there we go. So we have 90 or 0 0.999. So over here, the complement equal to one minus this value here, 0 0.0004. Now this value is a lot less than 0 0.05. So since, 0 0.00047, so 0, 0.0005 is less than our p-value, 0 0.05, our significance level. We will reject the null hypothesis. Uh, we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. 
and then we could literally just copy this part. So either way you do this, you could still see exactly what, you still get the same results. Sometimes it's a little bit better to show with the p-value approach because you actually get a value, the probability of falling into that rejection region versus this, you either reject or you accept. So both of them have their perks. It's a little bit easier to get this one than it is to get this one. It's a little bit uh, more beneficial to get this one because you have a, a level, like an actual number, how far off you are and everything. But both of them have their perks. So now let's see if we missed anything over here. All right, so null, null hypothesis is that our presidents are equal to American males in height. Our presidents are taller than American males in height. And step two, level of significance, they gave us that 0 0.05. Step three, where we're looking at the classical approach for this one. So we find our test statistics, 3.550. And 3.550 was really, really into our critical region or our rejection region. So our rejection region we found on Excel, or not Excel, our critical value we found on Excel. We looked at our rejection region way higher. Cool. And still with the classical approach, because the test statistic lies in the critical region or rejection region, we reject the null hypothesis. And there is sufficient evidence at the alpha equaling 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that, Amer or that US presidents are taller than the typical American male. Now, looking at the p-value approach, uh, we're still finding our test statistic. And this time we're looking to see the area um, of being inside the, so the, um, the area or the probability of taller Americans given that height. So here, because we have 0 0.0005, our p-value and 0 0.001. Um, actually, this is smaller. So our p-value is actually a little bit bigger. So it's between the smallest, smallest value. So we would say that there's, um, very significant evidence to our conclusion. So this is them using technology. So here the p-value of 0 0.0005 means that if the null hypothesis, so if the null hypothesis that the mean is equal to 0 point, or 176.3 is true, we would expect a sample of 180. 0.1 centimeters or higher to be in about five of the 10,000 samples that we result in. So that is very unlikely, or the odds of that are very, very low. So with the assumption of height, there is a population that 176.3. So put another way, because of the p-value is less than the level of significance, we reject the null hypothesis. And lastly, there is sufficient evidence at the alpha equaling 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the US presidents are taller than the typical male American. So that's that data. And that's our conclusion for that problem. But now everything there was given to us, what if it's not given to us? So a fun size of a Snickers bar is supposed to weigh 20 grams because the penalty for selling candy bars under their advertised weight is severe. The, the manufacturer calibrates a machine so that the mean weight is 20.1 grams. The quality control engineer at m and Mars is concerned about the calibration. He obtains a random sample of 11 candy bars, weighs them, and obtains the data shown in table one. So something tells me we're going to have to copy this. So let's just get this done and over with. And we could take it to Excel.
All right, so it looks like these numbers are a little bit messed up. So I'll fix these off camera. Okay, so now that we have all this data here, let's go ahead and get the necessary information from here. All right, so fun size, um, quality control engineers. So things that we would need is going to be our mean. And the mean here is going to be 20.1 grams. We need X bar, which we'll find with the information here. We need S, again, what we'll find from the information here. N, we'll find that here. And our level significance. So I don't see level significance, maybe. Ooh, alpha equaling. 0.01. So alpha at the 0 0.01 level significance. Let's see. So should the machine be shut down and calibrated because shutting down the plant is very expensive? He decides to conduct the test at 0 0.01 level of significance. All right, taking it over here, let's find all of the necessary information. So First, we'll start with the mean. So the mean we said was 20.1. The sample mean is equal to average of this data set. S, our standard deviation is equal to STDEV of the sample of this data set here. N is equal to the count of this data set here. 11, does that make sense? That's 4, 8, 12, minus 111. Okay, so degrees of freedom is going to be equal to this minus 1. And, and we have alpha. Alpha is at the 0 0.01 level of significance clear all this out and let's take a look at our hypothesis testing. So hypothesis test, we have our null hypothesis and that's that the mean is equal to 20.1 or our alternative that the mean is not equal to they didn't talk about it being higher or lower. We're just gonna say that it's not equal to that at that point. All right, so now that we have all of this, we could find everything that we need. So we could either do our classical method or the p-value method. So again, with our classical method, we need our test statistic. Uh, we'll start with the critical value first. So critical value T, critical value T is what we draw from here. So here we have a two-tailed test because that's what our null hypothesis over here indicates. So not equal to is a two-tailed test. And we have alpha equaling 0 0.01. So that means that either one of these sides are sharing that 0 0.01. And half of 0 0.01 is going to be 0 0.005 for the left side, 0 0.005 for the right side. Adding those two together, we end up with our 0.01 over here.
All right, now that we have that, we could find this middle area. So if we have 1% shared within those two areas, and this is gonna be 99% or 0 0.99. And now we have two critical values. So we have the critical value over here on the left side. So this is going to be T of the area to the left of this is 0 0.005. And this here, the area to the left of this value is going to be 0 0.99 plus 0 0.005. So this is going to be 0 0.995. And we come over here, our critical value, let's find those. So critical value for this very first one, that's going to be equal to T distribution is, let me scooch up. So T distribution is this T distribution or T inverse. Do we need an area or do we have an area? This one, we have an area that we're looking for the T value for. And now we just do this. So our probability here is 0 0.005. And degrees of freedom, we actually have it right here, degrees of freedom. And there we go. That's our first T value. For the second T value, we're gonna find this one here. The only thing that changes is the area here. So T distribution or T inverse, this time we have a area that we're looking for the value for. And here the area is 0 0.995. Degrees of freedom are still the same. Oh, and look at this. So these two are pretty much exactly the same numbers, except this one's a negative, this one's a positive, which makes sense because we had symmetry here. So it looks like we're still in the right value or in the right groove. All right, now that we found our critical value, if it's less than this value here or more than this value over here, then we'll actually find our, um, if it falls within these two rejection region, one of the two rejection regions, then we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject. All right, so that was a critical value. Now we're going to go for our test statistic. And our test statistic T is coming from the T distribution. So T itself is equal to X bar minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And oh, we actually forgot to do our center deviation. So let's just do it here. One more value that we forgot. All right, so our standard deviation is equal to S divided by the square root of N. So standard deviation. All right, standard deviation equal to S divided by the square root of N. Square root is SQRT of N. I forgot to put the closing parentheses, but it got it for us. All right, so now that we have that, we can find our test statistic. Coming over here, we have equal to the numerator is the mean to, or parentheses numerator is sample mean minus population mean and divided by standard deviation. And there we go. Let's see what we have. All right, so if we are at negative three, Let's erase these numbers here. So this is negative 3.169, and this is a positive 3.169. 1.04 is going to be somewhere around here. It's not within the rejection region, so we do not reject anything. So since our test statistic, is not in the rejection region. We fail to reject the null hypothesis.
So we do not have sufficient evidence at the 1% level of significance to reject the hypothesis. All right, so it didn't work out in our favor. So let's check the p-value method to see what that probability is. Maybe we could kind of convince the owner to shut everything down and calibrate the machines and all that. So let's clear this out. With the p-value method, what we're looking at is the probability of it falling into those categories. So the probability that it falls um, outside of those two values. Okay, so with the p-value approach, all right, so we're gonna test, we're gonna look at the probability being greater than 3.169, or we're gonna look at the probability of it being less than negative 3.169. Um, but let's take a look at this value right here. So this right here was our test statistic. So what we're doing at this point is just looking at our test statistic. We see that it's closer to our positive one than it is to our negative one. So we're going to look at the probability of our test statistic being greater than. So looking at the probability of falling into this right side over here. And again, so the p-value method, we're going to look at the probability there we go. The probability of the mean of the mean being greater than 20.1, that the sample mean is greater than 20.1. So here we have our test statistic already, so we don't have to worry about that part. So this is our t distribution. And with the T distribution, we're looking at T inverse or T distribution. So do we have an area or do we need an area? This time we need the area. So we could do our T distribution. X is our test statistic, our degrees of freedom. We actually have it right up here. And true for cumulative, because we want that entire area under, the, under that. So again, this one is a probability So of x being greater than, I'm sorry, x being less than, because it's always looking at the area to the left. That's this one here. T distribution, this, this, true. All right. And this is going to be equal to one minus this value here. So notice that we have these two values. So it clearly isn't going to be less than, it's gonna either be greater than or equal to. So we're gonna use this one here. So here, because we have the left tail and the right tail, we're gonna to have to multiply those two by two, giving it um, the left and the right side. So this is going to be, um, the probability that we have like less than or negative 3.169, which is less than or equal to T. which is less than or equal to a positive 3.169. So again, our T value, our test statistic, or the T value, looking at those two, and this is going to be equal to two times whatever the area was over here. 
So now that we have this value here, because we have to take into account both of these sides, so that's why we had to multiply it by two. But this value here, three, two. So there's a 32% chance that it will fall within this region. So being a 32% chance, we're really, really far away from it being that 0 0.01 alpha equaling 0 0.01. So because we're that far away, we cannot justify shutting everything down. So since our p-value is much greater than our um, level of significance in this case we have 0 0.322 or 323 being greater than 0 0.00 or 0 0.01 We do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And because we don't have that, we would say this. So we do not have sufficient evidence at the 1% level of significance to reject the null hypothesis. So looking at both of those values, we were hoping that this value was a lot smaller. We were looking for a tiny, tiny value so that way we could reject the null hypothesis, but we didn't, we didn't get that, not at all. So we could come right back here and see what we missed. Looks like we jumped around a bit. Oh, that was the last problem. All right, so here they graphed everything, no outliers. So again, we have mean equal to 20.1 grams, mean not equal to 20.1 grams. So two tail tests with the 0 0.01 level of significance. All right, so classical approach, we found our test statistic and our test statistic did not fall within our critical region. So we do not reject the null hypothesis at this time. And that's what we said here. So there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the Snickers have a mean weight different from 20.1. So let's check with our p-value approach. So from the data in table one, sample mean, sample standard deviation, we have those two. And we find our test statistic 1.042, 1.042, just a little bit off because we actually use um, more precise data. P-value approach, so this is a two-tail test. What we're looking at is the sum of these two areas. So sum of these two areas is at 0 0.01. And um, so the t-distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom, um, left of negative 1.42 and right of 1.42. So that is, we're looking at these two areas over here. So we were able to see those two areas. Um, what value did they get? We were able to see this right area and then we just, once we found this right area over here, we just multiplied it by two for this left area too. So adding those two together, that's where we got that three point something. There we go, the 3.40, ours was a little bit different, 3.22. And technology approach. But altogether, we say that with the p-value approach, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the Snickers have a mean weight different from 20.0 or 20.1 grams at the alpha equaling 0 0.01 level of significance. So in this case, the machine should not be shut down. So they're just gonna continue to make all the candy. And we could stop here. So if you guys have any questions, um, please email me. And if not, have a great holiday. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.